Okay, in, in this video I'm going to look a little bit more at NMDS, non-metric multidimensional scaling, in past, particularly on the interpretation of the environmental vectors. Now I'm working with a version of my usual scenario, which is a simulated environment with three oil platforms leaking oil from the drill heads which is getting incorporated into the bottom sediment and potentially affecting the marine communities of crustaceans, mollusks and worms. Um, the variable here impact underscore one um, indicates whether it's an impact site or a control site. One is an impact site so that's located just to the south of the platform. Zero is a control. The controls are located in the same depth of water but off to either the west or the east of the platforms themselves. And by looking at the hydrocarbon levels in the HC column you can see the different in difference in the levels of pollutant. The other three environmental variables here are depth, sediment and nutrients. So nutrients is a bit of a fudge. Normally it would be things like carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus. Sediment is a mean particle size and depth is depth in meters and the environment slopes from about 25 meters deep in the north to about 75 meters deep in the south and there are changes in the environmental variables along with that. Nutrients tending to increase with depth with finer particle sediment size. Now in most of the videos I have done for both past and primer depth is a negative number because it's below sea level. I have here converted it to depth is a positive number because it makes the diagrams, the ordinations, easier to interpret, particularly with respect to the vector plots. So if you've looked at other videos, bear that in mind if you're watching this one. Okay, now I've selected the biota and also the environmental variables, but you can see I have already normalized these. So for every column, or every variable, the value in the row has the mean subtracted and that is divided by the standard deviation. Sometimes this is referred to as standardization. Now normalization is the preferred terminology. So multivar, non-metric, and for some reasons this is running very slowly today. Okay. So how many environmental variables? Four. And it's going to come up and ask me to choose a similarity measure. Now the standard similarity measure for the biota, because the ordination here is being done on the biota, the standard is of course Bray-Curtis, which is what I will select when I'm given the option. So OK and wait again. Okay, here we are, finally. Um, I've pushed the view numbers button and switched to environmental variables um, and so I'm looking at those and not the scores. So over in the diagram the red are the impact locations and samples and the blue are the controls. And then the green lines are the vectors. Now, the sites down the bottom with the label impact and control one are the sites in shallower water. And the other sites labeled impact two and three and control two and three are the sites in deeper water. Now just looking at the ordination, the controls and impacts are clearly separating from each other as are the sites or samples in the two different depths. So the interpretation is fairly clear here. Now let's look a little bit more at the vectors. As I said in earlier videos, 
I had depth as a negative so it would be pointing in the opposite direction which is a little confusing. Now depth points pretty much straight up so that's telling us that the depth variable is going from shallower or smaller numbers at the bottom of coordinate 2 to the larger numbers or deeper depths at the top of coordinate 2. So shallower to deeper going this way. Sediment particle size goes the other way so it's larger in the shallower water and smaller in the deeper water and those vectors are almost directly opposite to each other and almost exactly the same length. Nutrient tends to increase also with deeper water but it, the vector is not quite so long so the change is not quite so rapid and it's a little bit off to the side so there's some change in nutrients also associated with coordinate number one or axis number one. Lastly hydrocarbons this goes the vector for this goes off to the side almost east west so telling us that hydrocarbons are increasing as we go from the right or east across to the west or left of the diagram. If the hydrocarbon vector goes pretty much east west or left across the page so hydrocarbons are low at the control sites and in larger concentrations at the impact sites as we saw from looking at the data. Now what about the vectors themselves? If you look at the scores or the numbers up here what you're looking at is the correlation between that variable and the two axes. So if we look at depth there's virtually no correlation with axis 1 and a very strong correlation with axis 2 and because depths are now positive that's a positive correlation. Nutrients um, show intermediate correlations for both axis 1 and axis 2 but somewhat stronger for axis 2 so that's why that vector increases towards the top but a bit off to the left. Sediments if you look at that line is almost exactly the opposite to depth. Very little correlation with axis 1 but a strong correlation with axis 2 so it increases down towards the bottom of the diagram because the correlation is negative. And then finally hydrocarbons. A strong negative correlation with axis 1 so it increases from the right to the left and some slight correlation with axis 2 and it is a negative correlation in both cases so the vector goes to the left and slightly down. The last thing you might be wondering is about the scatter among the points for the different sites. For the control sites all the points lie close to each other indicating there's very little variation among those samples but with the impact locations the points or the samples separate out quite a bit more. Now remember the locations of the samples or the points is based just on the biota. Now if we look here at sample uh, impact location number one and then go across over here to the first three rows in the data table you can actually start to see why those points are separating out note that the second sample has no crustacean 3, 4, 5 but large numbers of 6 and that is rather different from the patterns you see for the first row which is sample 1 and the third row which is sample 3 but then looking at those two rows, row number 1 and row number 3 crustacean 4, 1000 in that first sample compared to only 300 in the third sample 50 crustacean 5 compared to 10 in the third sample and so on. So there are differences in the composition or in the abundances 
of the biota in the different samples at the impact locations that's causing them to spread further apart and if you run your eye down and look at the next three rows for the control they're all fairly similar next three rows for the next impact and we get the same sort of differences as we saw for the impact site number one so hopefully that gives a better idea of what is happening and how to interpret both the locations of the samples and the vectors.